In this video, we're gonna be talking about saving for college with two tax loopholes that you might not have been aware of. And this is gonna go beyond the 529 college savings plan. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel or if this is your first time at our channel, welcome to the channel. My name is Travis Sickle. Let's get right into this. So the 529 college savings plan is a great college savings plan. In fact, I have two separate 529 college savings plans set up for each one of my four kids, but they also have another plan. And that other plan is a Coverdale educational savings account. Now I've done videos on the 529 plan and I've done videos on the Coverdale educational savings account, but I want to highlight these two tax loopholes that you might not be aware of to really take advantage of the Coverdell. So the first one that I wanna talk about are the income limits. Now, if you're not aware, I'm not gonna to go too much into the entirety of a Coverdell or even the 529 plan, but I do want to show you what these tax loopholes are so you can make sure that you're taking advantage of them. Because when it comes to the Coverdell, just about everybody is actually eligible to get money into it. It's just a matter of if you know what these loopholes are. And the first one's gonna be for contributions and the second one is gonna be for those distributions, taking money out of the Coverdell. So let's start with putting money into the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. Now there are income limits. So if you earn too much money, you can't make direct contributions, but there's a loophole, and that's why we're doing this video, so you can really understand what's available to you. So first, let's go ahead and look at what those income limits are to see if that's gonna even be an issue for this awesome college savings plan account. So here is the tax code for the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. And if we scroll down, we can see what these income limits are. Now it's written a little strangely, but there is a phase out. So just like an IRA or your Roth IRAs that you're looking at, at income limits with phase outs, the Coverdell has a phase out that starts at 95,000 for singles and starts at 190,000 for married filing jointly. But they have this strange verbiage that says bears too. But what it really is saying here is that from four singles, the phase out goes from 95,000 to an additional 15,000. So from 95,000 to 110,000 for singles and for 190,000 to 220,000 for married filing jointly. So what this means in a nutshell is that if you're earning for singles 110,000 or more on your modified adjusted gross income or 220,000 for married filing jointly, then you can't make a contribution directly into the Coverdell. But there is a loophole. And what is that loophole? Is that you can give the money to the beneficiary, to your child, and they can make the contribution. Of course you can do it on their behalf, just like you could with a UTMA or an UTMA or an UGMA type of account. You can just do it for them, but it's going to be from them. So you're giving them the money because their income is likely not over these limits. They can make the contribution. Now, another thing to understand about these contributions with the Coverdell is that it is a maximum of $2,000, which might not seem like a whole lot, but the money adds up and this is, a great account. So you're gonna get a ton of flexibility in it, up to $2,000, but the 2,000 is per beneficiary. So for example, I have four kids. So if I made a contribution of 2,000 for each one of them, and I had my parents and my in-laws and some friends, they all wanted to contribute $2,000 for each one of my kids, they could not. It is a maximum of 2,000 per beneficiary, not per donor. So that is per beneficiary. So this is a little bit different than other types of accounts with that type of requirement, but it is still 2,000 and 2,000 that you should absolutely consider saving into a Coverdell. And why is that? Because of the flexibility of investing in just about anything, including stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or ETFs. You just get a ton of options. I like control. If you like control, you can get that with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. Where the 529 plans, while they are great plans, like I said, each one of my kids has two 529 college savings plans, they're still limited to 
into the investments inside of that plan, which if you don't have a 529 plan, it's a lot like your retirement plan at work. So if you have one of those and you're just looking at the investment options, that's all it is. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but you're getting the flexibility to invest in just about anything when it comes to the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. Now, the other thing that we want to talk about with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account are the distributions. So there is another provision that I want to talk about, and that is getting the money out by the time your beneficiary, your child, is the age of 30. Now, if you use the money before then, this is not an issue whatsoever, but sometimes we look at this and think, oh, well, if it can't go past 30, then I don't want to use this type of account but there's a loophole. And what is that loophole? Is that you can take the money and give it to another beneficiary into another Coverdell Educational Savings Account, which is very similar, identical basically, to the 529 College Savings Plan. In addition to that, if you don't have another beneficiary that you wanna give the money to, you can actually roll it into a 529 College Savings Plan. Now you can't go the other way around. You can't take the money from a 529 plan and put it into a Coverdell, but you can put it from a Coverdell and go to the 529 College Savings Plan. Why would you want to do that? Because there is no age limit on holding the money per beneficiary with a 529 plan. So you're getting the flexibility in the Coverdell, and then you can flip it over to a 529 plan if there's still money. And you can have your beneficiaries' beneficiaries use it on down the road years from now while it grows over time. And that is really the whole key of all of these accounts is the time value of money, the longevity of keeping it in there so it can grow. Like the Roth IRA, you're getting that time value of money and all that growth is gonna come out tax-free as long as you use it for educational purposes with the Coverdell Educational Savings Account. So that is a huge added benefit. Now there are a ton of different nuances, things that you need to know about this types of accounts. I've done a ton of videos on them. Go ahead and check them out. Go ahead and check out the channel. If you have any questions on these types of accounts, 529s, Coverdells, other types of college savings strategies, let me know in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.